Do you believe that you're not allowed to get a divorce? Maybe this falls under your religious structure, your just religious beliefs, Christianity as a whole, the church that you go to, the family that you came up from. But there might be this piece that you believe or that you think or that has been told or placed upon you, just the simple fact you're not allowed to get divorced. Maybe you went through the whole process of getting married and having this place of sitting down and having your vows to death do us part, right? The piece that says you're going to be locked into this relationship forever. You're going to be committed to that person forever. But what happens when the other person inside of the relationship is not committed to that, is not willing to actually adhere to those vows, to that commitment, to that, that truth that they said, hey, I'm willing to be this way if you're willing to be this way, and then they decide, see ya no longer care. This is what happens when you're in a narcissist relationship. You see that this person that you fell in love with is no longer the person that you fell in love with. The version that you saw, the person you thought was originally there, no longer seems to exist. In fact, it seems to be completely opposite. The guy that you once showed up as loving and kind and respectful and honest with you has completely flipped and is now a liar, a cheater, an abusive asshole that no longer is willing to provide space or time for you, but instead is focusing on what he wants, what he desires, and anything that you bring up is an inconvenience to him. Now, when we bring it into the place of Christianity, religion, this is where it gets dicey. It gets dicey because so many people have believed for such a long period of time and are very adamant about the fact that you can never divorce. It's not possible. You're not allowed. This is in multiple different religions, not just Christianity, but that's typically what I'm going to reference because that's my background as well. So oftentimes we see Christianity that perpetuates abuse inside of relationships simply because they lock the door and say, you're not allowed to actually leave. Have you seen this? I've talked with many people that have been inside religious structures that have not been allowed to leave their relationship or have been counseled or have been kicked out of the church because of the simple fact that they were going to get a divorce from a person who was abusive and hurting them. Now, you'd think that it would make sense when we're talking about someone who's physically abusive, right? But even then, a lot of times you'll have religious structures that say you're not allowed to leave, okay? So this is a piece that is very prevalent in a lot of religion and a lot of Christianity out there, okay? What happens is people get stuck in the relationship even longer because not just the fact that maybe the religious people say you can't do it, but then they feel this huge piece of shame and guilt. And, and what happens is you start to feel a giant level of shame and guilt that you're letting down your religion, you're letting down your culture, you're letting down your family. And as a result, you don't go through with getting a divorce. And it keeps you in this relationship longer. It continues to add this brain fog and confusion to your life and it continues to leave you in a place where you don't actually make a move, but you stay stuck. Then you start resorting to just hoping that something's going to change, just praying constantly, thinking if you just pray about it, it will eventually fix him. Maybe God will come down and like change his heart or manipulate him to think something different than what he's currently thinking. Now, this isn't saying, hey, that the Holy Spirit and God doesn't work to convict, but at the same time, he also gives people free will. This is the part that sometimes gets lost inside of this whole conversation is you'll see people that say, hey, like God gave free will, but then we don't actually take a look at being like, yeah, that means the toxic guy in your life has the free will and has the choice to be able to choose to abuse you or not to abuse you. He has the choice to cheat on you or not cheat on you. And you don't actually affect that. You don't affect his decisions. You don't affect his choice. In fact, if we looked at it, you probably haven't affected much of him in the entirety of the relationship because he doesn't value, respect, appreciate, or have any space for your opinions, your beliefs, your thoughts, or your feelings. Do you see this? Does this resonate with you so far? If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness about narcissistic abuse and help provide transformation. Breaking women free from toxic relationships, from the trauma bond, from the addiction, from the triggers, helping them know who they are, establish healthy boundaries, and start to transform to the person they're actually trying to be. I work with women that have been abused, helping provide closure and clarity from the toxic relationship that they got out of, from a person who was just like me how I interacted, how I responded, and being able to provide answers so that they can actually move forward. I also work with a select few guys that have reached out saying, hey, I feel like I'm narcissistic. I identify with stuff that you say. 
Can you show me how to be able to work through it? And I talk with them as well. If you're interested in any of that, you can go to rawmotivations.com. Would love to be able to help either one of you to help you move forward. I work with women that have been abused. And I work with men that have been narcissistic assholes. I don't work with men that have been abused and female narcissists. It just doesn't work. Not my avatar, not the person I connect or can help. Uh, but there's other resources out there that can't. Anyways. That's kind of where we are with that. So when we talk about this piece of getting a divorce and we bring it into the realm of Christianity and religion, there's all this guilt and shame that you're not allowed, uh, you're not you're not able to, etc. And so one of the passages that people will come up with or people will, will see would be what about when they ask Jesus, be like, wait a second, you, you it, let them have divorce in the Old Testament. So what about now? Can we have divorce now? And it goes back to this passage, Matthew 19, 8, and where Jesus said, because of the hardness of your heart, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives, but from the beginning, it was not so. Meaning, hey, the initial intent was not that you get divorced. Okay, that was like the initial intent. But because there was these guys in the Old Testament that had hardened hearts, that were assholes, right? That these guys were not actually living according to a purpose and direction that was anything remotely close to what God wanted them. He's like, hey, Moses gave an exception. I gave through Moses an exception saying, hey, it's okay if we go ahead and divorce because we need to because your heart is so hard. Now, we see a lot of times inside the Bible where hardness of the heart has been shown. You see that with Pharaoh, right? Let my people go. Like the children of Israel trying to leave Egypt. Like he would be like, yeah, you can leave, then hardness heart. Yeah, you can leave, then hardness heart. So we see different pieces where hardening of the heart is there. But what we're talking about inside of older biblical times is a hardening of the heart, not letting people be free. Hmm, kind of like Pharaoh too. Uh, but what we're talking about is inside relationships. So when we're looking at the relationship and says, hey, Moses actually gave you this. Moses granted you this permission to be able to divorce. Why? What was actually going on inside of Old Testament and what was going on here? Okay, what was happening is inside Old Testament, if a person um, separated or if a person was like, hey, I don't want you anymore or, or hey, we're going to get a divorce but hadn't actually given divorce papers, that other person was like legally bound to the first person. Okay, so let's say uh, narcissist in the Old Testament was like, hey, wife, no longer want you anymore. I want this person. So I'm going to go over to this person, but I'm not going to give you divorce papers. That Then that culture, that woman was legally bound still to him. So if she went to someone else, screwed up, but if she went to someone else, then they'd be like, oh, you're a cheater and we'll stone you and throw you out. Okay, so what was happening is like she was trapped. She was trapped inside the relationship because he wasn't willing to actually give her a divorce. He's like, let me have my cake and eat it too. This has been going on from the eons of time. It's not just like narcissism popped up the other day and we're like, oh, this is brand new. No, it's been here. We just haven't had a label for it. So uh, what would you have is like, hey, he's leaving this woman trapped in the relationship. She can't go out and take care of herself, her family or anyone else simply because she's still trapped inside this, legally bound. But he's not giving her a divorce and he doesn't care to give her a divorce, doesn't care about her, doesn't care to give her a divorce and doesn't care to do anything that actually helps and supports her. In fact, he's already moved on to the next person. Does this sound like narcissism at all? Like want to be able to paint a picture. This oftentimes happens in your own life. He doesn't care about you, doesn't let you leave, goes and cheats. Very simple. Okay, so the provision that was made here was this aspect of Moses being able to say, hey, out of the hardness of your heart, you being an asshole, you need to actually divorce this woman so she can actually go out and be free. Not much more to be said. What I'm trying to get you to understand is a lot of times religion wants to keep you in conformity, wants to keep you in a place that says you have to fit the mold, fit the box, and look the way, play the part. And when you do this, you can't get divorced because that will look bad on the church. That will look bad on Christianity. That will look bad on your family. That will look bad on your parents. And everybody brings in all of their stupid egos versus actually saying, wait a second. If we take a look at this, this guy is mentally, emotionally, physically, and sexually abusing this woman. And we're saying still be in the relationship. How does that even make sense? Because when you put this under the grounds of, Christianity and religion, and we start to strip away all of the laws and regulations and conformity, we start looking at a connection with God. God is not the God of abuse. He's the God of love, which means, hey, he doesn't want you to be in a relationship that's consistently abusing and pushing you down, but you'd actually be free. And he's provided that 
And he provided that inside the Bible for people who had hardness of their hearts. Narcissistic assholes that were not willing to actually release the woman that they no longer cared about or that they never cared about, but they were just had her trapped for image purposes. And so when you think of this, I want you to understand there's going to be people that are going to project onto you. You can't do that because think of what it would do to our family name. Screw the family name because you've brought this projection and, and ego into the picture that you feel like your family name is more important than your kid's safety. Screw you and your entitled ego. Like, understand that, like, this piece of you being stuck in abuse, so many people aren't going to want to acknowledge that you're in it. Because if they acknowledge it, then they have to actually step into the shit. And they don't want to do that. This is why a lot of Christianity is plastic. It's, like, made of this face of, like, I want to look and appear a certain way. Masks that come into Christianity, very narcissistic. And a lot of narcissists that are in Christianity because they want to look and appear a certain way. But actually, digging down deep under what's actually going on inside, can't do that. Hey, we're all fine. We're great. As they roll up into the church after they've just been screaming at their wife. As they get up another day and preach another sermon after they're just watching pornography the day before. This all happens inside of so many Christian circles. Out of the hardness of their hearts, there is a provision made. Moses allowed them to divorce their wives because the hardness of their hearts was like, let's not keep abusing, manipulating, and controlling these women. Let's actually let them be free because you're not willing to actually step up as a man and lead them and actually be a man to be able to help them grow, develop, and be the woman that they're called to be. Instead, you're keeping them held hostage and you're going out and being with other women. There's our wrap up for narcissism in the Bible for this week. Let me know what you thought. Uh, you might have enjoyed it. You might have hated it. Uh, and I'm sure there'll be a couple people that want to spar back and forth of what you're thinking. Uh, but that's my opinion. And uh, that's where I believe uh, is there uh, based on who God is and based on the Bible and based on the scriptures that are talking through this piece of the hardness of the heart of why there's sometimes provisions made uh, not exempting God's plan. Because he says the initial design from the beginning, it was not so. The initial design was one man, one woman to be married forever. But uh, we as humans have a way of screwing that up pretty bad. And then when you bring in abuse, it's not a place where you should be in a relationship forever. You have an opportunity to be able to grow, change, heal, and develop yourself. The question is, will you do it or will you stay trapped inside the toxic relationship that's currently destroying your life right here, right now? Y'all have a blessed, wonderful day. If I can help at all, go to rawmotivations.com. would love to help you move forward in the healing process today.